just say welcome. I'm sure that Kathy and the boys really appreciate all of you being here today. And uh, just uh, really super to be able to see all these people here to support her and uh, to support this family. Um, just some housekeeping things to help you out. We do have a nursery back there. It's just it's the only room out there that has the door open if anybody needs that. Um, if Jose was here today, he would be jumping up and heading in that direction already, <laughs> just so that you know. I would ask him if he needed a good try, and he would say yes. <clears throat> uh, also, there's restrooms. If you go out there and turn to the right, the restrooms are uh, on that back wall. There's the men's and then the women's. And then uh, following this time over here, we'll have a dinner across the parking lot in the other building. And uh, you're all welcome to, to be there for that as well. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to sign the guest book, whatever you call it, I don't know. I'm calling it a guest book, I guess. We'll take that across the road too. And uh, you can continue to write in there. Place in there to write down your memories too, or good thoughts, or whatever you want included. Again, thank you on behalf of mm -hmm. Jose's family for being here today. And uh, let's begin with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today for your presence with us. We thank you, Lord, for this celebration of Jose's life. And uh, I would just ask, Lord, that you would uh, guide in our time together. I pray, Lord, that you would be pleased with all that takes place here. And uh, Lord, I pray that we would do service to both you and to Jose. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in a minute, I'm going to open it up and ask if any of you want to share memories. There's a lot of us, so if we each take just a minute, it's going to take a long time. So <laughs> I know not everybody likes to get up and talk a few minutes. I've got my material all prepared. Jose was uh, a part of our family, really. Um, Sorry. I, uh, I didn't know Jose very well, but I knew Kathy. Kathy and I grew up together in Mucler, and I know how this is affecting her, and she's going to have a bunch of friends and family that call on if she needs us. Yeah. One Easter, my family gathered up here to have our family picture taken. <laughs> And Jose decided he was a part of our family, so he came and got right in the group. We went ahead and took the picture anyway. So we've got family pictures with Jose in it. But uh, you all know the kind of person that Jose was since you're here today. Um, two passages of scripture I thought that I would share with us. Uh, the first one is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we do not fear, even though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. And then the other passage is from John chapter 5, verse 25. Most assuredly, I say to you, the hour is coming, and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. One other thing I forgot to mention, we are recording this, uh, and I'll put that up on our Facebook page, and it'll also be on YouTube. So if, uh, if there's anybody who did not get a chance to be here and they'd like to watch, uh, that will be available. I can't guarantee when, but uh, we are recording it. So. Jose Joe Sandoval, 61, of Weston, Ohio, passed away July 23, 2021. Jose was born in Brownsville, Texas on June 11, 1960 to the late Felipe and Lorenza Montenegro Sandoval. We always called her Wella. He married Kathy Light and she survives. Jose enjoyed going fishing and although he had many fishing poles, he had his special ones to use. He also enjoyed going to garage sales and sitting around the campfire with his family and friends. Jose was a member of New Life Community Church in Grand Rapids. Jose is survived by his wife, Kathy, sons, Jose Jr., Wendy, Juan, and Ashley, Jaime, Tyler, honorary granddaughter, Sarah, grandchildren, Kyson, Jalen, Winter, Aiden, Jamarian, Samuel, Sawyer, Carter, 
Carson, Camden, Jackson, and Xavier. I apologize if I messed up any of those. A celebration of life service will be held Monday, August 2nd. Was there anybody that had a memory that they would like to share? Go ahead, please. We were honored to have them walk us home to the end. <laughs> it was very special for us. Yes. It was special for him, too. <laughs> Since everybody likes to talk, I'll talk a little bit. So um, my, my dad, I love him very much. I didn't spend much time with him towards the end, but I did love him very much. And um, thanks to Kathy, thanks to the pastor, he changed his life. Because growing up, it was really difficult. A lot of negative, but the best thing about it is he showed me a lot of good out of all that negative. Because if I didn't go through all that, I wouldn't have my lovely family. Wouldn't have to be close to my brother. I guess Ashley, I don't know. <laughs> but um, Kathy, then of course Robin, Xavier, all you guys over there. I know I don't want to spend time with you guys, but I live all the way across the U.S. <laughs> but the thing about it is, my dad loved unconditionally. I try to do the same thing in everything I do. Sports, <coughs> it's my family. And I do thank you for all for showing up. Thank you for doing this. I'm really grateful. It's my pleasure. But I do love you guys. Thank you so much. Go ahead. Uh, okay, big guy. We only did cook up. Fire pit down there. You better be cool. Bring me food. You cook it. And if you needed something, you got the phone. If you didn't have it, you find something that's at it. If you're helping any way you can, you want to drink the can, you need something done in your car, or you need help, you always call somebody for more help, you need to work on the car. But, him and the camera are a good part of our lives. They were open, yes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I had a terrible time just narrowing down my stories. <laughs> 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 Anyone else have a memory or something that they want to talk about? Um, <laughs> Jose, what a sense of humor. I think it was at Wells Memorial Service that, uh, I, I'm sure I've heard this story several times. His brother's name was Jose as well. Jose Angel Sandoval and Jose Manuel. Is that right? Yep. They get it right. Sandoval Jr. And uh, he would often tell his mother, you got it wrong. You should have named me Angel yeah. instead of him. <laughs> and she would look at him. I don't know if you ever saw her. A little bitty lady. She'd look at him and shake her finger in his face and she said, no, I should have called you Devil. <laughs> But you know, Jose was a very spiritual man. Um, I know, like uh, Jose said here, uh, there was a time in his life when he was a completely different person, a very hard person. And I'm sure that uh, um, we probably, most of us here would not recognize the Jose that we knew with the Jose that was back then. And uh, oftentimes he would tell stories in church about meeting people from his, I'm going to call it his previous life, and they would say, hey, where have you been? What's going on? And he would use that opportunity to tell those people about Jesus Christ and the change that Jesus had made in his life because he was a completely different man. There were times when Jose would be sitting in a hospital waiting room, waiting to be called back to the emergency room to be treated, and he would see somebody there, and he would say, God told me that I needed to pray for that person. And so he'd go over and he would carry on a conversation, being in tremendous pain himself, waiting to go back to be treated, and he would pray for those people that were sitting there. 
Jose had something in his life, and that something was Jesus Christ. It made a tremendous difference in who he was. I've seen him many times stand out here in the right there outside of my office telling people that he had to go for water therapy. Anybody know what water therapy is? Fishing. Fishing, that's right. <laughs> Many times I would see him telling other people about water therapy and they just get this puzzled look on their face and wonder, what is water therapy? Do they have a pool where you go for therapy? And they were just puzzled and he just let them go. They'd sit there with that puzzled look and they'd ask all kinds of questions and sometimes I just couldn't take it anymore and say, he's going fishing! <laughs> Especially in the spring of the year when the walleye were running, Jose had to go out and he had to do his water therapy. And he always knew that was going to make him better because it was therapy. So, just a tremendous difference. And Jose's told me stories that I would try to tell you today and I would break down and I just couldn't do it. So I apologize that I can't do that. Uh, stories of his old life. And... Uh, Maybe someday, but I, I can't do it today. The passage that I've chosen for today is John chapter 14, the first three verses. This is Jesus speaking, and he's telling his disciples about the end of his life. And he says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. Three items that I take from this passage of scripture to help us at this time. The first item is faith. We need to have faith in order to make it through these difficult times. This was prior to Jesus' crucifixion. He's trying to tell his disciples that there's coming a time when he's going to be crucified. They had spent all of three years with Jesus. I mean, they were close. Just imagine the closest of friends after these three years. And Jesus is saying, I'm going away. And you're not going to be able to come with me. And the disciples are saying, oh, wait, Jesus, what, what is this all about? And they're, they're pretty troubled. And so Jesus is comforting them when he says, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. He was telling the disciples that they didn't need to be troubled any longer. Because they knew where they were going. They knew what the future was that God had for them. They had accepted the gift of salvation that Jesus Christ had for them. And you know, when we look at the life of Jose, and when we hear stories about him being in, a, in an emergency room, waiting to be treated and going and praying for somebody else. That's an indication of the change that had taken place in Jose's life. He was no longer focused on himself. He was focused on Jesus Christ. And that faith that he had in Jesus Christ gave him the ability to go and to pray for those people, even when he might have been a person who was in worse shape than those people. It was his faith that helped him. And Jesus is telling his disciples he knew where he was going. And uh, he tell, he's telling the disciples, you've already believed in God. You've already believed in me. And that's where you're going to find the ability to focus. That's where you're going to find the ability to continue to go on. Jose knew that the only way that he was going to get to God was through Jesus Christ. And you know, Kathy said this morning, one of the previous pastors, the one that was here before me, he, uh, he sent her a text. He said, you know, Jose, he's probably in heaven this morning, fishing with the disciples. If you know anything about the Bible, Peter, James, John, they were all fishermen. They were the disciples that Jesus called. And now Jose's up there with him, probably showing him the right way to do it. <laughs> But Jose knew the only way that he was getting to God was through Jesus Christ. And you know, that's a controversial thing in our day. It's through Jesus Christ. It's not through what I'm able to do. It's not through what Jose was able to do. It's not through any of our own efforts. It's through our believing in Jesus Christ for our salvation. 
That is the only way that we get to God. The second item I see in this passage is peace. After Jesus' death, he was preparing to go prepare a place for his disciples. So in the second verse, it says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. Sometimes it says mansions. Some translations it says rooms. He's talking that he is going someplace to prepare a place for his followers. His followers being the disciples. His followers being people today who have believed in Jesus Christ for their salvation. Jose was a believer in Jesus Christ. And you know, the pain that Jose went through with his back, he, honestly, he doesn't need water therapy anymore. He's probably still doing it, but he doesn't need it. <laughs> that pain's gone today. And you know, that's good for us to know. As we talk about peace, the Bible talks about a peace that passes all understanding. A peace that passes all understanding. I just ask you to, to, to let your mind dwell on that for a minute. What does the peace that passes all understanding look like? It's beyond comprehension, right? That's the peace that we can have when we know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. In Philippians, the author wrote that there is a uh, some, some ingredients in a recipe that we can have that give us peace. He says, first of all, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he said, and you know, sometimes we're in circumstances where it doesn't seem right to rejoice. But we can rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known to all. We need to be joint and gentle. We need to be thankful. Those are the three items. And then we receive the peace that God gives to us. God grants us his peace, and it's that peace that passes all understanding. And Jose knew that peace. He knew that peace, and he knew that it came from God, the peace that he had. You know, as we're standing here today, or as we're gathered here today, we all know that Jose went through difficult times. So it's, we can't say that because a person is a Christian, they're not going to have difficult times. We all have challenges in life. We all have difficulties. But God helps us through those difficult times. And if we follow that simple little three-step process that I just gave you, Philippians 4.4 4 is where it begins. Rejoice in the Lord always. Let your gentleness be known to all. And be thankful. Those three things that just helps us to rise above whatever the circumstances that we're we're uh, dealing with and I think it's just because we become focused on God and no longer focused on our circumstances and then the third item in this passage the first one was um, sorry I got to look at my notes faith the second one is peace the third item is hope last Sunday when we found out that Jose had passed away one of our, our people here came up to me and says, you know, I'm really sad to hear that Jose passed away. But I know that he's going to be there to greet me when I make it to heaven. We have that hope. As believers in Jesus Christ, we have a hope that there's a future for us beyond this world. We don't just go into the ground and deteriorate away. We have a new life that's waiting for us. As I was thinking about it this morning, it's almost as if we have two new lives. Jose became a Christian. That was a new life for him. And now today, or last, uh, when was it, last Saturday? Another new life. He began his life in eternity. What an amazing hope for us. And Jesus said in this passage, he was going to prepare a place for, for his disciples, but he's also preparing a place for all of us. Any of us who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can have that hope as well. And as believers in Jesus Christ, we can look forward to seeing Jose again. And we can look forward to seeing our Lord and Savior again. There's no denying that the death of Jose is leaving a hole in our lives. These people that are sitting here in the front experiencing it more than any of the rest of us. But he's left a hole. And it's hard to fill that hole. But I hope that these three items that I've given you today would help you 
to fill that void in your life. God is willing to fill that. He's just waiting for us to accept that. And I would just invite you today, I don't do this in every funeral, but because I knew Jose so well, and I know that he would want to hear this. If you're unsure about your salvation, if you're not sure if you're a Christian, all it is is a matter of saying to God in your mind, I want to, I want to believe in Jesus Christ and I want to turn my life over to you. And that can be the beginning of a journey for us, just like Jose's journey. It can be the beginning. Let's pray together. Father, as we're gathered in your presence today, we're reminded of the frailty of life that you've given us. In sorrow, we thank you for your grace, and in the presence of death, we thank you for eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. And now as the spirit of our loved one has returned to the care and love of our Heavenly Father who gave it, we commit his ashes to you in the sight of our Creator and Redeemer. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in the sure trust and hope of the resurrection to come. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just pray for your comfort. And I pray, Lord, that as we go away from here today, that there would not be a person who would go away from here without the knowledge of their salvation. And I pray, Lord, that we would have that, that belief in you, that belief that would strengthen us, that would give us peace, that would give us hope, that would give us faith and something to look forward to. Now, Lord, I pray that you would bless us as we, as we uh, depart this place today. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. This concludes the service here. As I said, you're welcome to go across the parking lot. It's just the door that's right over here to your right, right across into the double doors across the parking lot. And there's food over there for you.